Welcome to this video where you will learn about Spring Cloud functions that are part of the Spring Cloud module. In this module, we will introduce you to Spring Cloud functions. We will talk about why Spring created the Spring Cloud function module, what are Spring Cloud functions, and also how they are different from AWS Lambda functions. Then we'll move on to building your very first Spring Cloud function. We will be building this from ground up and introducing all of the necessary dependencies that are required in Maven. We'll then demonstrate what that looks like running on your local machine. And then finally, in the final section, we will prepare the application for deployment into AWS and also test that within AWS. Welcome to this video where you will learn about Spring Cloud functions that are part of the Spring Cloud module. We will cover where Spring Cloud functions fit into the cloud abstraction layers, briefly covering the different types like infrastructure as a service, container as a service, platform as a service and functions as a service. We will then look in more detail at what Spring Cloud functions are and how they work and how they're different to AWS Lambda functions. Before we get into what Spring Cloud functions are, it's worth going over the cloud abstraction hierarchy. The higher up we go, the less the developer needs to be concerned with the infrastructure. So the guys at Spring talk quite a bit about the value line. This is effectively the line where, as a developer, you don't care or it's no longer a concern. Basically, what they're talking about here is what developers need to understand and focus their attention on. So everything below that line is someone else's concern. And everything above that line is really building upon sort of the business logic of the application. With all the different as-a-service systems available out there, this line gets higher and higher. So at the bottom, we have infrastructure as a service. Well, you need to think about all of the infrastructure, physical hardware, VMs, etc. You would need to configure and manage all of these as well as your web containers and also your code. Next, we have container as a service. The cloud providers have implementations like in AWS, you have Elastic Container Service. In Google, you have Google Container Engine, etc. So developers create their applications, build their containers, and then deploy these containers into the cloud infrastructure. A developer here needs to think less about the infrastructure and more about the containers and their application. Then we have services like Elastic Beanstalk, Google App Engine, Heroku, which are all platforms as a service. So here the developers need to think less about the containers that they're running on and actually then just deploy the application into the platform as a service environment. These environments are also typically will handle auto scanning too. This is more of an application level of serverless. And then finally we have function as a service, where the application has been broken down further into smaller business logic components in the form of functions that are then deployed and interact with each other. So with each of these layers of abstraction, they provide more and more managed infrastructure by the cloud provider. The serverless or functions as a service layer at the top is where Spring Cloud functions are deployed. So, why have Spring created Spring Cloud functions? Looking at Spring Cloud site, they have a statement here which basically says promote the implementation of business logic via functions, decouple the development lifecycle of business logic from any specific runtime target so that the same code can run as a web endpoint, a stream processor, or a task, support a uniform programming model across serverless providers as well as the ability to run standalone locally or in a PaaS. Enable Spring Boot features such as auto configuration, dependency injection, metrics on serverless providers. So what does this all mean? So the first point is rather than your business logic being buried away in services and components within your monolith or handcrafted microservices, push that into small self-contained functions. Second point is effectively saying that rather than building your code and thinking that it's got to handle and implement being a web service or stream processor, you can focus on implementing the core functionality and configure it to work in a way that it needs. A very useful part of Spring Cloud Functions is that you'll see in a future video is how you can create a function that automatically becomes a web endpoint locally and you don't need to implement that functionality. The third point is that you can work in the same way regardless of what the provider is that you're working on. 
So the approach here would be the same as running on AWS as it would be on Google Cloud or Azure. Also, if you're running in the cloud or locally, this is a key point here because where typically to run your functions for AWS, you either have to deploy them into the cloud or set up a SAM local or server architecture model locally. That is quite a bit of hassle, whereas Spring Cloud functions take away that from you and you can get the function built and deployed locally for testing within a few minutes. And then finally, Spring Cloud Functions provide you with all of the ability of the Spring Boot application. So all of the features that you know and love, like auto configuration, dependency injection, metrics, etc. But these will be available on the serverless providers too. So when the Spring team were thinking about how they could help support the building of functions as a service, on the various cloud platforms, they were drawn to these three interfaces in JDK 8. And it will be these interfaces that Spring Serverless Developer would implement. So starting at the top, we have a function interface. Function is effectively taking a value, processing this value, and returning something. This is going to be the most common one, I would say. Typically with functions, you would want to take an input, process it, provide an output. This is going to be the interface to use here. The next is the consumer, which is effectively taking whatever value it's been given and processing it. This could then be pushed onto a further service, storing in a database, logging to a file, pushing into S3 after that processing is complete. And then finally we have supplier, which will return something back to the caller, but isn't taking any arguments. So it would be something along the lines of requesting a stream of data from another system perhaps. So there are two different approaches for defining functions that Spring Cloud Functions provide. The first one is where you actually create and return a function. So here we have a very simple implementation of an uppercase function, which takes in a string, uppercases it and returns it. And then we have another example here, where rather than actually creating the function and building it as a bean, Actually, you create a class which implements that function, and then the apply method within the function interface is used to actually implement that function. The second approach would be used if your function is more complex, let's say it has some other third party dependencies, and it needed to use those dependencies within the actual function itself. And it's a bit difficult to be able to use that in the first approach. So that's where you'd use the second approach. So if we go back to creating an AWS Lambda function, just to remind ourselves what that looks like. So you would define your public class Lambda function, and it needs to implement the request handler. It would be using the input type string and the return type string. We would need to implement the handle request method. And in the uppercase example, we would take that request string convert it to uppercase and return it. So to do the same operation within a Spring Cloud function, hopefully most of this slide would look familiar to you um, having used Spring Boot before. You could place your Lambda function bean within your main Spring Boot application as a very, very simple approach to creating this Lambda function. So what we would need to do is create a, a method which returns a function with the two types string and string. The implementation of that uppercase function would be taking that request string, uppercasing it and returning that lambda function. This needs to be provided and exposed to spring as a bean. And what will then happen as part of all of the dependencies and the spring boot dependencies is it will recognize that it's a type function and it would then use and expose that within your function as a service. There's a second thing that you would be required to do here and that's basically to provide the entry point. So in the same way that you would need to extend the request handler from an AWS Lambda perspective, in Spring Cloud Function what you need to do is just create a simple uh, public class, call it whatever you want, here we've called it Spring Lambda Handler, we will extend the Spring Boot request handler and then provide the two types which your function will be expecting. So the type that is passed in and the type that will be returned 
If you then look into the implementation of Spring Boot Request Handler, you'll see that actually the AWS dependency that you would need to pull in in order to be able to obtain this definition actually uses the AWS Core Request Handler. In the next video, we'll show you sort of how to actually build this up, the dependencies that you need to use in your project to be able to create this uppercase handler.